In this video I'm going to go into some depth on the PSPA file format. When you import a file, uh, you're asked to choose a TXT file. And I'm going to start by just showing what happens when everything goes right. This is a PSPA file where I can see the folder, image name, grade, last and first name, and then extra information up to teacher is standard PSPA stuff. Department is a new field as of 2010-11. Um, where we can say this person is a, uh, a faculty member, this person is part of the administration. You'll see also in this particular example I have a title and a salutation. Uh, that allows me to tell the difference between Mr. and Mrs., um, who's a teacher and who's an assistant teacher and so on. So w when you have all of this information and you say import, uh, everything goes very smoothly. You can have a one-click preset and so on. What's happening is we're copying the images off the hard drive into a folder um, where the database knows how to find them even if the, the original CD has been taken out. So when things go smoothly, you can say, let's make a staff page, and it just works. The title shows up for everybody, the uh, individuals are broken up by the department that they work for, um, and so on. It's, it's quite smooth. But the PSPA spec at this point only includes the department and frankly it's quite likely that uh, the PSPA file that you receive doesn't support even the 2010-11 format. There are going to be many schools for whom all they get is this information. They won't get the department, the title, or the salutation because that's all fairly new. The standard is changing in a good way but you may get an old style PSPA CD. And so this video describes what to do if that's the case. Uh, what to do about it if you get somebody who doesn't have a grade, what to do if somebody doesn't have a teacher assigned. So what I've done is I've knocked out the grade, knocked out the teacher, and I've removed all of the new style information from this file, which is in the Excel format, just so that you can see what's going on. I'm now going to save it to a text file, uh, which we can then import into PhotoFusion. So I'm going to call this the um, old style index file. Okay, so that's been saved. Let's just close this down and go into PhotoFusion, create a new project, and load up that old style PSPA file and see what happens. First I say click on the yearbook button. It asks what file would you like to load. I'll say the old style PSPA file. So just to refresh, there's no department, salutation, or title. And there are problems with the file in the sense that one kid has a uh, grade that's been knocked out there, and one person doesn't have a teacher specified. So let's do the import and see if PhotoFusion notices and learn what to do to fix these small mistakes. Okay, so PhotoFusion did notice. It said um, that students were missing teachers, grade, or were not part of a department. And the department, as you saw, was quite critical to have one-click preset creation of panels. So let's go and fix these things. I'm automatically taken to the organizer, where I see I have a bucket for the missing teacher, the missing grade, and department. So as somebody at the school, I would know this person. I would know that they uh, don't have a teacher, but that's fine. I can drop this list down and say, ah, that person is in Miss Derrock's class. This person here doesn't have a grade, but I happen to know that guy. He is in grade uh, 12. And then we get to the missing department. Oh, right. There's not a department set for anybody. So well, that's fine. We'll just take it um, in clumps. I can see that below this point, everybody is a student. And so I'll just click on the first, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and shift click on the end, and choose make into student. So what's happening is that all of these individuals have now been tagged as in the department student, given a priority which is low compared to teachers, and put into a group called student pages. So we're doing okay. Um, by the way, th this um, organizer showed up in details mode. Um, you can change the mode. If it doesn't look like this when you start it up, just change the uh, details like that. So what have we done? We've cleaned up a missing teacher, a missing grade, and we've taken care of the students at least specifying a department for them. So let's see how we did. I'll click on Revalidate School. 
and it's noticed everything's fine except for the 14 adults. Everybody else is fine. It's not complaining about missing students or grades or anything like that. Okay, so now we need to get to figure out who is who in this school. One way to do it is to look at the teacher field. I right clicked here and that allowed me to see who the teacher was. Different publishers have different strategies for marking people as teachers. At least they did prior to the current school year where they can just say they're part of the uh, faculty department. Sometimes you'll find that Mr. Stalwick is, um, has his uh, set as a teacher, also Mr. Stalwick. That makes it very easy to figure out that this person is a teacher and this person is not. Sometimes it will all say staff and then you're going to have to do a bit more legwork to figure out who does what in the school. But I'm lucky here. I can see that um, these people have a last name that matches the teacher name and therefore I can just glance and say, oh, well, they must be teachers. So I'll select these three and say make into teacher. Um, these three here, Mr. Mondry, Mr. Winkler and Mr. Toshiba, they don't have that true. They're, they're, they're not part of a grade. Well, I happen to know that this is the principal, so I'll say um, he's part of the administration. These two here, I'll hold the control key down. They're part of the support staff. Moving on, I see people that um, I know are assistant teachers, and I'll just select all the teachers I can find and say they're all teachers. This guy is on the support staff, and these two are part of the administration. So th that's the kind of thing that you can do if you're a member of the school and you know who's who. Uh, and the make into makes it all very easy. What's really happening here is that clicking make into will run a kind of a macro that says, well, this person is part of the uh, staff. He's got a priority of four. He's put into staff pages. This person is the, um, I happen to know that he's the vice principal. Maybe I should be setting that. I can say he's the VP. Um, this person is also a VP. These ones, because I said they were teachers, they got a teacher title automatically. So we're doing okay. We've filled out a bunch of stuff, and if I say revalidate the school, it's going to go through and find, okay, everybody's got a department, a grade, a teacher, all is well. And what that means is that when I say go and make a staff by department page, it just worked. Now you'll notice that we don't have a title for some people. Mr. Toshiba, for example, doesn't have a title. And if we go down here, it looks like I've actually made a mistake um, that these two should be in the staff section. So let's make uh, a few corrections. I'm going to go and find all of the people that are currently in the faculty. and find the two that I miscategorized. So I'll select both of them and say make them into support staff. And then we'll go back and check my work. Uh, just by changing tabs, it's automatically reflowed the entire thing. And I see on the second page that all three staff members are on the second page. Maybe I'll just take a moment and um, make everything fit on a single page like this so we can see more easily. And I'll also increase the label size so we can see what's going on. Okay, now I don't have a title set for several people, so I'll go back and fix that up. Uh, one way to find people without a title would be to say, just go into details mode and show me the titles. And now I can just sort, and I see that um, these guys don't have a title set yet. So we'll call him the bus driver, and we'll call him... Uh, the cafeteria, and is there anybody else that doesn't have a title set? Oh, these are all part of the faculty, excuse me, the staff and the administration. I think that he didn't have a title yet, so he's the principal. Okay, so going back, we'll check my work. Everything reflows automatically, and I see that we have titles set for everybody, and that guy doesn't have a title, so we'll just go and look for... I'll just say, show me everybody, and look for the one who doesn't have 
there, the title set. So this is the um, crossing guard. Okay, so that's how you go from uh, an old flavor PSP file very quickly into a new style um, uh, PSP layout, and that allows you to very quickly jump from doing a staff page to doing students grouped by the teacher, like this, to doing it grouped by grade, and so on. So I, I showed a couple of things about moving people from one classification to another. Let's go back and see some other common scenarios. It's often the case that somebody missed photo day and needs to be added in. So let's do that. Let's go and find, uh, on my file system, somebody who uh, missed school day. So let's say that this is the um, this is the kid who missed school day. Um, here, this one. I'll just select the, the individual and say add student. By clicking this button they're copied into the same location as all of the other kids uh, that were on the CD and they're showing up here in the added students bucket. It's important that you go into this bucket and select the individual in order to fill in more information for them because there are actually two copies of this photograph now. The original one on my hard drive and then the copied version that is alongside all the other students in the PSPA database and um, the attributes that we're about to set on this, this student need to be set on the right copy. So we're now looking at the right copy and if I say he's a student, right now you can see there's nothing set for him, we don't know his name, grade or anything. I'm going to say he's a student and he is in grade 12 in Miss uh, Derock's class. His last name is um, Ardvark. I just want him to show up at the head of the class. And uh, his first name is Adam. That should be enough information for me to go and see him at the head of the Derock class. And it worked out. There he is. Um, he's after the teacher and the assistant teacher because they have a higher priority. How do you set priorities? How is it that um, the teachers are showing up ahead of the kids? That's because, uh, if I just go back to the, um, this individual here, by making him into a student, his priority was set to five automatically. And I can change that. I can say I'd like him to be even ahead of the teacher. Uh, I'll give him priority zero. So he'll be at the very top of his um, section. So when we go back to the Create tab, we see that worked. He's been pulled up to the top. So that's how you can reprioritize people. A, a practical example of that would be, I noticed that when we did the staff pages, that the principal was showing up after the VPs. That's probably not going to be okay with the principal, and so uh, let's just find people who have the title of principal. There he is, and we'll change his priority to uh, zero to bring him up to the top. And now when we go back, we'll see that he comes first in the list of administration members. It often happens that you've got to exclude people for one reason or another. Um, let's um, go back to grouping by the teacher and concentrate on uh, this, this student again. For whatever reason, he needs to be hidden from the book. Maybe he's gone into witness protection. Maybe he's left the school. You don't want to actually delete his photograph, though. It's simpler just to say, um, show me everybody in Miss Derrock's class. I'm going to shift back to thumbnail mode to be able to find him easily. Here he is. And I'll say exclude. Just click on him and say exclude yes. Now when we go back to the create tab, we'll see he's gone. He's just been removed. The nice thing about this is that it's non-destructive. If he comes back to the school, leaves the witness protection program, you can just unexclude him like this. And then in the create tab again, you'll see that he's popped right back where he was the last time around. It also happens that you need to move kids from one place to another, that um, people join uh, a different class, perhaps because uh, they rebalance kids mid midway through the year. That's straightforward. You just select the kid or the kids if you want. You can do more than one. And you move them from, let's say, the Derock into the Germain class. So um, that's done. If we go back to the Create tab, we'll see that he and several other kids have left and are now part of the Germain group. So I'm pressing the page down key, and there he is. He's showing up alongside uh, somewhere in here the other kids that were moved from the first into the second grade. So I've illustrated how to fix up older style PSPA CDs. 
how to um, add missing information such as grades or teachers. Certainly the most important thing is saying make into student, make into administration, make into faculty because then all of these presets will work. We talked about excluding, reprioritizing and moving students from one place to another.